Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Eid Mubarak to everyone in there. Blessed day to all the others for whom aid is not really significant. It is a day of um, joy and rebirth, like all the Eids have this aspect. And there is a strong story connected with this celebration. And this is this famous story where Ibrahim, Prophet Abraham, peace be upon him, was um, told to sacrifice his son, right? And like all the stories, these mythological stories that we don't know precisely how they happened or if they even happened, but they are told in many variations, also in the Torah, in the Bible. And when such a story is told, that always means there is something told to us. Because even so, it is a personal event of this prophet. But we have to understand this, these people, they are not telling something personal. It is always a message from, for everyone, no? So, let's not go on the moral aspect of it. How can that be that a father would sacrifice his son and so on? But let's look at it a little bit from another point of view, and it would be the point what, first of all, we have to ask ourselves, what represents a son or a daughter? You know? And in the son, especially with the son, it represents the treasure, the most precious yeah, for a father, you know? the most um, important, especially in this time. You know? So, he was ordered, was commanded to sacrifice what he loves the most, what is most precious to him, you know? And this means, this is the meaning of this aid, you know? And before that, there is a day in that is called Arafat. Yeah. And on this day, this is the this is where where the people stand in a valley. And this is the day where you know yourself, where you're supposed to know yourself. And in that day you stand as you, if you can the whole day, yeah, from from the morning to the evening. You stand there and you pray. You pray and you you ask forgiveness, you ask blessings for people, whatever comes in your heart, that is the moment where you do that. And if you have never done um, such a thing, this is a very strong experience because you don't pray a minute or 10 minutes, which most people also don't do, but you pray hours. You will pray hours. You will pray the whole day, yeah, literally interrupted by some breaks of, of food or of drinking or going to the bathroom. But basically, um, you pray the whole day. You know? And what you will experience when you do that is that through the prayers, you understand what is missing somehow in our hearts, what is, what is there. Because first you look you look to your mind, you look uh, for whom you could pray. And there is a strange effect that you remember all kinds of people, but then comes after a while, you know, how many people you have that you want to pray for, you know, 10, maybe 20, but that would be already a lot, you know. And you will see that there is not many that you can pray for, that you feel like an emptiness. You don't know anymore after a very short time what 
to pray for, right? So you experience this poverty in us, this emptiness, this kind of not being really full of something to give, something to offer. You know? And this poverty is a kind of shock, you know, is a kind of, of surprise for most of people. You know? But when you keep on going, then happens the next thing, and this is that you understand that you can pray for everything. You, know? you can start to pray for the birds, you can start to pray for the ocean, for, for everything there is. You can give your prayers. You can remember people that maybe you have just met once in your life or two times in your life. You may pray for the place where you go and get your food, you know, and so on. And it, all this comes in your consciousness. And finally, you find yourself a little richer. And this is what the prayers give you. It gives us actually it activates this muscle, this dead muscle, yeah, that is supposed to be our heart. Yeah. But for most of us, it is just a biological organ that functions you know, day in, day out. And already for this, we should be very grateful. But it has also another function. It has higher functions. It is a mystic organ. And one of the higher functions is that it activates our kindness, that it activates love in us, that it can activate a fearless condition. Yeah. And this is the power of the prayers, and this is how we know ourselves, not by thinking, yeah, not by just observing our thoughts, but by really experiencing this emptiness, this poverty, this inner poverty where we are so small and so living in a, such a small area. You know? And it also has to do with um, what happens, for example, in music. You know? If you listen to classic music like Beethoven, Bach, Mozart, to mention the kings, no? One thing you will notice in their music is the subtlety of emotions, that the variety of emotions, that it is so rich on emotions, it is so rich and detailed of all kinds of emotions. While nowadays we came to a system where we only can have the emotion of like or don't like, right? And this possibility to really listen and to explore the variations of our emotions, the different kinds, this has been lost with many people. Yeah. And this is a sign that we are poor in our hearts. You know? And therefore we always say the next Revolution, the next transformation, will be a transformation through the heart. And to make that happen, the first step is to become fearless. And how we get fearless, that we're going to explore in another video, more deep, deeper. So for today, Eid Mubarak and have a good time with your brothers, with your sisters, with your families, with everyone that you love and like, and good health for everyone. All the best to you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.